talking about our red blood cells. Amazing little cells that are in our blood. And one of the things about their structure, their structure was the hemoglobin molecule. Now, if you remember, the hemoglobin molecule was four protein chains connected together, two alpha, two beta. In the middle of it was a um, heme group, and that attached, so if we're looking at my hemoglobin molecule, in the middle of it was the heme group. One of the things that has that that is important because iron is going to be what oxygen attaches to. So from our diet, we're going to have iron that the oxygen can attach to. Well, when we look at the life cycle of a red blood cell, the life cycle of the red blood cell is roughly 120 days. We depend on organs, the liver, and especially the spleen, to break down the old red blood cells. Now, that means we have to make sure that we can handle all the little products included. Now, here's what's going to happen with that red blood cell when we have iron get attached to it. <clears throat> when we eat, okay, our hope is that we take in foodstuffs that have iron. And especially an iron that we can use in our body. So we are dependent on our food that we eat. In the food, we hopefully have Fe2+, Fe3+. When we begin to get into the stomach acid, and stomach acid is amazing, all right? Our foodstuffs, once it gets to the stomach acid, anything that is Fe3+, turns it into Fe2+. So once we have this, the ferrous ion, okay, we're going to be able to take that iron where it can be used for the red blood cells. So we're going to have a little glob. You guys remember the little globulin stuff that can help transport something? In our digestive system, we've got something called gastroferritin. Gastro, because we're in our stomach. Ferritin, because we're dealing with the iron, the ferrous. Okay? So that F2... Fe2, y'all know what I mean when I say F2, right? I'm okay, good. I, I usually, I forget I do that. The iron will bind to the gastro. Once it does this, it can now be transported to our small intestine. This is where it gets to be released. The structure of the small intestine is awesome. If you were to take our small intestine, dissect it out, cut it all loose, stretch it out, snip down through the middle, and open it like a book, okay, it'll look like all these little finger-like projections coming off of it, the villi. This is what gives us a lot of absorption area. And it's going to be very well vascularized. So it's going to have a very good 
blood supply. So, once we can transport that to the small intestine, we get it released for absorption. The, once we have the Fe2 in the blood plasma, because that's what's going to happen, okay? It's going to encounter the blood supply. It now will bind to another glob. This glob is now going to help transport that ion in the blood. Once we reach the liver, some of that iron is going to get released for storage. So if we look at our little molecules being represented, <clears throat> we take in, hopefully, Fe2+, Fe3+, we're going to need a glob from the stomach to help us make it to the intestine. At the intestine, we're going to see that this will get released, the iron will get released into the blood. In the blood, we need another glob to help carry it. This will help carry it to the liver. And at the liver, some of the iron will be released. Some of it will continue in the bloodstream. Is everybody following the little circles, the little molecules? Okay, so look at what has to happen in the liver. For us to store the iron, we need another glob for it to attach to. So we're going to see that we have, see how it's got the little yellow triangles, okay? We're going to have what's called ferritin. And the little molecule of iron will attach to it for storage in the liver, known as apoferritin. Apoferritin, ferritin, together, we've got the storage for the liver. Is everybody kind of following me? Now, what happens to the rest of it? The iron that's going to continue to travel, meaning it's going to still be in the bloodstream, we're going to see it make it to the organs where the iron can be used. Its job definitely make hemoglobin. Making it to the bone marrow to get into, you know, to go to the red blood cells and make hemoglobin. What is myoglobin? What does myo tell us? Muscle. Muscle. It'll help. Some of it can go to the muscle cells and attach to what makes the red color and the majority is going to be in the form of the hemoglobin. So one of the things about the iron metabolism, it is a nutritional requirement. We'll see a lot of our foodstuffs say iron fortified. Have you ever seen that on your food stuff? Mm -hmm. Okay. The best choice is to try to eat foodstuffs that have the iron naturally. Because you can be given like an iron supplement, but it takes a lot for your body just to absorb a little bit of it. Okay? But meat, um, some dairy, leafy green, very green um, vegetables have a lot of iron. Okay? 
we're going to lose iron every day. We're going to lose it through our urine, our feces, any type of bleeding that occurs. Ladies, that means menstruation. Men are going to lose about 0.9 milligrams per day. Women, about 1.7, mostly due to menstruation. Because the body's ability to absorb it is not a perfect process, we usually have to take in more than what we need. Well, more than what the body is going to be able to put to use. So iron, the thing about it though, when we look at iron and we get that into the cells that are going to need the iron, and if we think about our process, we take it in, we have to have a glob to get it to the intestines, we got to have a glob to get it to the liver. we got to have a glob to get it to the tissues. Okay? Our body has to be busy just being able to transport and get iron. And of course, when we think about iron on that hemoglobin molecule, its job find the oxygen. Think about that. Some of the things that will help with this production, this usage, vitamin B12 and folic acid. What do you know? How does a B vitamin get used up in the body? And what could happen? What like process <coughs> could we be in that might use up the B vitamin? Fight Fight or flight. Stress. Every day, and then if you have special stressors, one of the things that uses up B vitamin is stress. Now, folic acid, how have you normally heard about this one? They tell you to take this if you're thinking about getting pregnant to start at about three to four months before you decide to get pregnant. These vitamins, okay, they're going to help with cell division, DNA synthesis that occurs in erythropoiesis, which is red blood cell production. Vitamin C and copper. Hmm. How do we normally think about vitamin C? My immune system. Okay. Vitamin C water soluble you can't really take you can okay but if you take more than your body needs you're simply going to pee and poop it out okay um copper what do you think of with that i think of a metal and i'm like whoa hold up metal in my system? Yeah. Okay. These are cofactors for enzymes. What was a cofactor for an enzyme? Anybody remember? It enhances the activity of that enzyme. So if you have an enzyme that has something that a this a particular molecule, there would be an area on that enzyme for the cofactor to attach, and the cofactor would enhance the activity of that enzyme. 
a lot of our, um, like the copper, zinc, that sort of thing, these are good for helping to act as cofactors. In the case of vitamin C and copper, they are cofactors for the enzymes making the hemoglobin. Probably like, um, I don't know, they'll have like these masks for women, or I guess men too, you know, and they have like copper in it, like it's with copper and vitamin C for your body. Right, face. because they are, they are marketing that to us as a beauty product, and The making us feel good. That's how everything is pretty much sold, right? If something was sold negatively, we wouldn't buy it. Okay? A lot of things are sold to us as especially women. And it's simply let it's because they both are important to cell production. I love beauty product information. <laughs>